Hi Geo classes, this is Miss Holden doing lesson two in unit 11. So today we're going to add and subtract radicals. This is a shorter lesson, but it's actually a little bit more difficult to add and subtract than it is to multiply and divide. So the first question we have is just a practice from what we learned yesterday, because we're going to find the area of the triangle. Remember, area of a triangle is always on your reference sheet, but by now you should know the formula, and that is half base times height. Okay, so that's the area of a triangle. Now my base right here is in yellow, radical 10, and my height is 2 radical 5. So basically I'm going to do 1 half times radical 10 times 2 over radical 5. Now look at this 2 down here that I've made a line through. I can cross out, I can cancel that with the 2 up above. So I'm going to cancel this 2 with this 2. The 1 does absolutely nothing to this. And I'm basically left with radical 10 over 1. I don't need to have that 1, though. But the radical 10 is on top. This radical 5 is still in the denominator. So I have radical 10 over radical 5. I can always try and see if this is divisible before I worry about having to rationalize the denominator like I did yesterday. But radical 10 divided by radical 5 is radical 2. Okay, so that is my area of the triangle. That was just an extra one there. Now I get into the perimeter. So here's another triangle in pink. The sides are 2 radical 2, 3 radical 2, and 1.5 radical 2. They tell me the perimeter of this triangle is 6.5 radical 2, and they want me to make a conjecture about how this answer was reached. So basically, come up with a guess as to how did I get that. Well, think about what perimeter is. Perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So I would have to add up all these sides to get my answer. Now look at my perimeter. My perimeter is 6.5 radical 2. So this radical 2 that was underneath all of those radicals, I did not add that. I left that alone. Okay, so again, this radical 2 stayed radical 2. Look what I did to the number, the coefficient that was in front of the denominator. So the 2, the 3, and the 1.5. How did that become 6.5? Well, basically, I took all the sides and I added them. 2 radical 2 plus 3 radical 2 plus 1.5 radical 2. And all these coefficients in front can just be added together as long as the number under the radical is the same. So I added 2 plus 3 plus 1.5, and that gives me the 6.5. The radical 2 that was in the under the radical sign stays radical 2. So basically the rule is, and I have this rule written down below, as long as the number under the radical is the same, you add the coefficients and you leave the number under the radical. If the number under the radical is not the same, then you cannot add or subtract the radicals together. Similar to when we look at fractions. When we're adding or subtracting fractions, the number under the denominator needs to be the same in order for me to add or subtract. So here's a rule right here. Adding and subtracting radicals. You simplify all terms if they can be simplified. You do that first. Add or subtract the coefficients of any radicals that are the same. So those are called like radicals. And then I keep the radical. So if I want to look at number one, I want to simplify this. The first thing I do, these numbers under the radical are not the same, but let me simplify 3 radical 18 to see if I can make it the same. 10 radical 2 can't be simplified, so I'm only simplifying the 3 radical 18. So you're saying to yourself, what times what is 18? And one of the numbers needs to be a perfect square. So 9 times 2 is 18. So basically the 3 stays out in front, Radical 18, I break down to radical 9 times radical 2. Now the radical 9, I write that first because that's a perfect square. Radical 9 equals 3. So I'm going to take that 3 and now the radical 9, which equals 3, and I'm going to multiply those together. So I'm actually going to get 9 radical 2. This 10 radicals 2, I just bring that straight down. Now look, I have the same exact number under the radical sign. So 9 radical 2 plus 10 radical 2. Look at the rule. You add or subtract the coefficients. So I'm going to add the 9 and the 10 together. And that's 19. And I keep the number under the radical sign. So that's 19 radical 2.
Okay, if you need to pause the video, please do so. If you want to try B on your own, see if you can try B. It's similar. So this 19 radical 2, I don't have to simplify. Try simplifying 2 radical 8. So you can pause the video and then turn it back on when you are ready to check your answer. So radical 8 needs to be simplified. I can't subtract these if the number is not the same. So radical 8, what times what is radical 8? Well, 4 times 2 is radical 8. So this 2 that was in front just comes down. Radical 8 breaks down to radical 4 and radical 2. I write the radical 4 first because that becomes 2. And I multiply it by the 2 that was in front. So this is actually going to become negative 4 radical 2. So this 19 radical 2 gets brought down. And now I know that this is 4 radical 2, and I'm just subtracting them. I can do that because the number of the radical is now the same. So you add or subtract the coefficients. 19 minus 4 is 15. And then that radical 2, you leave that alone. You're not adding or subtracting the number under the radical. You leave it alone. All right, let's look at 2. Simplify the following expressions. Well, now look, these already have the same number under the radical, so I can just go ahead and do this. I don't have to simplify it. So I get 6 radical 5. I subtract the coefficients. 18 minus 12 is 6, and this stays radical 5. 3 is the same idea, except that I'm going to have to simplify at the end. But look at the number under the radical. This is radical 24. This is radical 24. So you can go ahead and you can add these up. There was no number in front of here, so there's a 1. So 1 plus 5 is 6 radical 24. Now the thing is, this is not simplified, this radical 24. Think about how you're going to break that down. Think about what perfect squares go into 24. Well, 4 times 6 is 24. Now I write the 4 first because this is the perfect square. That's getting simplified. Radical 4 equals 2. I multiply that by the 6 that's in front. 6 times 2 is 12. And then this radical 6, that's an irrational number that can't be simplified, just gets brought down the whole time. Okay, if you need to pause the video, go ahead. Number four on the next page. Again, you can't add these if the number under the radical is not the same. This two radical seven can't be, the radical seven can't be simplified, so I'm just eventually going to bring that down. I'm going to work on simplifying the radical 63. Now here, this is a radical 7, so think about it. Oh, 9 times 7 is 63, and 9 is a perfect square. So sometimes the number under the radical of the other radical can help you simplify this. Well, 9 times 7 is 63, so radical 63 breaks down to radical 9 times radical 7. I write the 9 first because that's a perfect square. Radical 9 equals 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. So this is 2 radical 7. I just bring that down. And this is 12 radical 7. Now that I have the same number under the radical, I can add the coefficients. 2 plus 12 is 14. And I leave the number under the radical alone. OK? Now I'm going to do some geometry problems with these radicals. Do a little bit of perimeter and a little bit of area. So number five wants to find the perimeter of the triangle shown below, shown to the side. So I basically want to add up all these sides. The perimeter means to add up all the sides. So I'm going to add radical 12 plus 2 radical 2 plus radical 32. Now the 2 radical 2 is simplified. I cannot do anything with this 2. But I can simplify radical 32 and I can simplify radical 12. Okay, so try doing this, pause the video, try doing them, and then you can turn it back on to check your answers. Radical 12 simplifies to 4 times 3. Radical 4 is the perfect square. Radical 32 simplifies to 16 times 2. And of course, the 2 radical 2 just stays 2 radical 2. Now, this is a perfect square. Radical 4 equals 2, so this is going to be 2 radical 3. Radical 16 equals 4, so this is going to be 4 radical 2. And this, of course, just stays 2 radical 2. Now I have a little bit of a problem because the numbers under the radical are not all the same. 
So I can only add the numbers that are the same. So I'm going to take these on the right, the middle and the right. These I can combine together. I cannot combine that with the two radical three. So my answer, I'm going to combine these together. Four radical two plus two radical two is six radical two. And this two radical three is just hanging out in front. So my final answer is two radical three plus six radical two. These cannot be added together. So that's as much as I can do. Okay, number six, I have the area of a triangle. Think about what area of a triangle is. We already did one of these before. So the area of a triangle is half base times height. So I have the base and the height highlighted in the blue and the pink. They are where the um, sides that form the right angle are. So I'm just going to multiply. I find multiplying a little bit easier. I'm going to multiply one half. The base is radical 24 and the height is five radical six. So when I do that, the numbers in front get multiplied one half times five and the numbers under the radical get multiplied. 24 times six is radical 144. So that's the difference between multiplying and dividing and adding and subtracting. When I'm multiplying, the numbers under the radical do get multiplied together. Now I have to simplify this because it does say simplify as much as possible. This radical 144, I can simplify to 12. It's a perfect square. So basically I have 1 half times 5 times 12. You can do that on your calculator. Or notice 12 is an even number. Half of 12 is 6 and 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, you need to pause the video to copy anything down, please do so. And my last problem is just to find the area in the perimeter of the rectangle that's shown. And I wanna simplify as much as possible. So I'm gonna start with perimeter. Please remember that a, um, this has four sides to it. So I'm adding all four sides. So don't forget that this side over here on the left is also radical 75. And I have this three, 11 radical three, and then I have this side, and then I have this side. Some people just add the numbers that are there, but there's actually four sides that I need to add together. So 11 radical three plus radical 75 plus 11 radical three plus radical 75. Could you put two in front of there? Yeah, but I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Now the radical threes cannot be simplified. The radical 75 can be simplified. How do you know if it can be simplified? If there's a perfect square that goes into that number, it can be simplified. There's no perfect square that can go into three, but there is a perfect square that can go into 75. And that is radical 25 times radical three equals radical 75. And that's actually perfect because this is radical three. So in order for me to add these together at the end, it would be nice if they all had the same number under the radical. This radical 75 also simplifies to radical 25 times three. Now this radical 25 is a perfect square. That's the whole reason behind simplifying. You're getting a perfect square that gets simplified. This radical 25 equals five. So I'm just bring down this 11 radical three. This becomes five radical three. I bring down this 11 radical three and this becomes five radical three, okay? I'll just show you, this just came right straight down. This came right straight down. Now that all of these numbers under the radical are all the same, I can add these up. So the rule for adding is all you do is add or subtract the numbers, the coefficients, the numbers in front of the radical. So 11 plus five is 16, plus 11 plus five is another 16, that's 32. And you do not add the numbers under the radical. You leave them alone. So it's 32 radical 3. And the last part, I want to find the area of this rectangle. Remember, area is base times height. So I'm going to multiply 11 radical 3 times radical 75. Now remember, multiplying is different. You multiply the coefficients in front. This just has a one. So one times 11 is 11, but you also multiply the number under the radical. So 75 times three is 225. This unfortunately can get simplified. As long as there's a perfect square that it's divisible by, you can simplify it. 
Well, 25 goes into, um, actually, I'm sorry, this is a perfect square all by itself. Radical 225 is 15. I was going to say it was 25 times 5, but that would give me that same answer at the end. Um, so radical 225 is a perfect square. It equals 15. And so I don't have a radical anymore. And 11 times 15 is 165. Okay, so that's lesson two. There's no homework for this, but make sure you understand it. Um, tomorrow you're going to work on the Delta Math assignment on radicals. So there'll be some adding, subtracting, multiplying, simplifying, dividing, and somewhere you have to get rid of rationalize the denominator. So if there's anything you don't understand while you're doing the Delta Math, you can look back on your notes. Delta Math will show you an example of a similar problem if you're stuck. So look at that before you try it. And then there's also some videos that you can look at there as well.